Gave you all that you needed. You cut, but I'm bleeding. And all of my strength that I gave to you. Yeah, I should just stick to talking. <laughs> Okay, you guys, <sighs> keeping faith. Oh my goodness. I took no notes, but I feel like I have a lot to say about this show that I started watching years ago before the world ended and finally finished it a few days ago, maybe sometime earlier this week or last week. I think, I think it was earlier this week. I'm recording this at Saturday night. April 1st. This is not an April Fool's joke. <sighs> How to explain this show. I'll start off by telling you the premise. The show is named after the main character. Her name is Faith. Faith Howells. And it's called Keeping Faith. Double meaning there, obviously. The premise is she's a wife and a mother. And one day her husband goes off to work and he just never comes back. And so... She's thrust into this horrible situation where she's trying to find out what the heck happened to her husband and also keep her family together because she has three young children. She has like a, a preteen or early teen and then a, a middle child and like a girl, another girl, like two girls and a boy and the boy is the baby. And he's, she's like on maternity leave, I think, because she's a lawyer. I think her husband might be a lawyer too, whatever. She's on maternity. Yeah, I think her husband's a lawyer. She's on maternity leave because she's recently had a baby. He's a few months old. And yeah, he goes missing and she needs to keep her family together. So she goes back to work at the law firm while she's trying to figure out what happened to her husband. She can't find him. She starts to uncover things about his life that she had no clue about. And these things just throw her for a loop. And on top of that, because he's missing and because she's the wife, of course, suspicion and speculation about her, the law comes down on her because they're trying to find the husband too. So that's the, the basic setup to the story. Now, this series is on Acorn TV and I subscribe to them actually years ago. And I don't return to this service very often. And I don't know why, because everything I've watched from them, I've enjoyed. They have a lot of different uh, shows on there from like Australia, New Zealand to the UK. Anyway, okay, getting back to this. I like a lot of UK content. In my opinion, actors from across the pond in the other direction, they're superior in Almost all cases, I feel like they're superior to actors from over here in the U.S. Not that actors from the U.S. are just are, are bad, but I just feel like U.K. actors have this edge. There's something about them that makes their performance feel so authentic, like it's coming from a real place. And there are several actors here that are that are absolutely fantastic. But in general, so this is just an in general thing. Anyway, this show, they filmed it in English, and then they also filmed it in Welsh. Exact replicas. I've seen clips of this side to you know side by side that you know them showing the scene and then the other scene. It was it was just crazy that they did that. The the work that probably went into it, especially because she does not speak it or she doesn't speak it fluently, so she had to really apply herself to do that part of this show. But anyway, there was something about it that really drew me in right away. The one thing that made me interested to watch it was just the premise. Okay, this is interesting. You've got this mystery. Okay, it was the mystery that drew me in. And also because I was familiar with her, the actress Eve Miles. I first saw her on Doctor Who, and then she ended up being cast in Torchwood, which was a Doctor Who spinoff. Now, the character she played in Doctor Who was completely unrelated to the character she played in Torchwood, even though those two shows are connected. But I really like Torchwood. That was a fun show. I'm sad it's gone. So I'm familiar with her. So that was another draw. Oh, okay, her. I, I like her acting, so let me watch this. And while it was the mystery that drew me into this show, 
It was the performance of the characters in here, especially her performance, that kept me hooked to it. Yes, there was a span of time that I went without watching it, but I came back to it and finished it. And boy, oh boy, you guys, this is a show I'm not going to forget anytime soon, probably never. I feel like I want to go back and rewatch it. And that's not something that I say very often about shows. And as you know me, I can be bad about starting a show and not finishing. Cobra Kai is an example. But I do plan to finish Cobra Kai. And before you get on my case about finishing this show, before I finished Cobra Kai, in my defense, I had started this years before. So I was just finishing what I started. But anyway, what I was trying to say was, despite the fact that it was the mystery that drew me into this, also despite the fact that in a lot of ways, this is more a character drama than anything else, the characters, the setting, the acting, the world kept me coming back. When I came back to finish watching it, it was season two. Once I picked back up with it, I just could not stop. And I watched it as often as I could. You could just really feel for her and her situation and what she was going through and the stuff that she would find out about her husband. And it just really just it, it blew her mind away because she thought she knew him and she found out she didn't know him nearly as well as she thought she did. And she has to battle all of these external things that are just coming at her and coming at her while she's trying to be a strong mother at the same time and the strain that it puts on her and this happy face, this this strong face that she puts on in front of her children and when they're not around, she's breaking down. You know, she's in the shower crying or she's sitting outside staring at, at, the, at the water and just like with this, you know, terribly sad look on her face and all these memories that she has of her husband and she's wondering, is he dead? What's going on? And so you go on this journey with her emotionally and you can just feel it. Like you can just feel her emotions because she just shows everything on her face. Her face is very expressive. Her character's spunky and and she's feisty and she's strong and she's strong-willed and she's determined, but she's also vulnerable and she it can also be emotional and she can break down and she's scared. And so she she's she's just got all these interesting mix of of, of qualities and, and parts of her personality that just make her such an entertaining character to watch on the screen. I love the interactions she has with her children. I love the interactions she has with the people around her. I loved pretty much everything about her character. There was, I just, and, and I don't know how much of it was her character or the way Eve played her character. I think it was Eve. I think it was her performance that brought this character to such loving life. I mean, I did not want to part with her when this show was over. And that's not something you can always say about a character. And you know, I can get really agitated a lot of times by female characters in a show or a movie. I can be pretty critical of them and they can annoy me. And while there were times that she did things or said things that I didn't agree with, she never annoyed me to the point that I was just like, you're such an idiot. You know, she never she she never did that with me. I understood her complexities. I understood all these different things about her, the nuance that she brought to the table in, in portraying the experiences that she was struggling with. And I felt a lot of sympathy for her. I wanted her to be happy and I wanted her to have a happy ending. I will say that despite the fact that when when the show was initially over, I was bummed about some things that happened. But upon further reflection, I was thinking that it actually made sense. Not that it didn't make sense what happened, but what I mean is I accept the way this ended because it feels like it was a proper ending. And if it had ended in another way, like something that I would have personally preferred, I feel like that would have taken away from the weight that this story had and the true-to-lifeness 
that it presented. And I think that was something that made me appreciate it. You didn't know what was going to happen to some of the characters. And while there was this element of mystery involved, like I said, this was more of a character drama. So it's not action packed. It doesn't go at a fever pitch. It's, it's slow paced. It's a slow burn. You're just plopped into the middle of her life when this thing happens to her and you take the journey with her through this portion of her life. And then when that part is done, it's time to leave her. And I didn't want to leave her. And I didn't think that I was going to fully accept the way things ended up for her. But like I said, it felt like the more authentic ending than the one I would have preferred. I'm trying to be vague because I don't want to give anything away because if you guys ever get around to watching this, I would like you to experience it without knowing much of anything about it. Anyway, I will stop talking about that part of the show. I was looking at some reviews that audience members had left about this it's got solid ratings, like let's say IMDb. I don't know what the critics rated. I have n I have no clue. I didn't even look at it, look it up on on Rotten Tomatoes or anything. But on IMDb, it's got like a seven point one, seven point whatever. There are several reviews where people were not happy with this show because it's so slow paced. Even though it's slow paced, honestly, to me, I didn't feel bored one moment and I didn't feel like, let's get on with it. But other people, they had an issue with the pacing of this. There's not a lot of episodes. There's only 20 total episodes. The first season has eight. Seasons two and three have six. Each episode is about 55 to 60 minutes long. So they're decently sized episodes, I personally felt like they flowed pretty well. But if you want a lot of like more snappy stuff happening, then maybe you'll feel a bit dissatisfied. But if you just kind of go into it with the thought that I'm just going to spend a few months or years in this woman's life and just kind of go along with her in her journey and get to know her and get to know the people around her and her children. One of her daughters agitated me. I did not care too much for her oldest child. She was a little turd bucket sometimes and she annoyed me. But anyway, whatever, I digress. Basically, um, just for warning you right now, don't expect anything fast paced. If you like character dramas, you'll probably like this because character dramas, they roll along at a slower pace than something mystery oriented or action oriented. There's definitely elements of suspense in here. They don't happen a lot, but a lot of the conflict that's happening in here are the situations that she gets herself into with regard to like legal issues and being caught between a rock and a hard place in certain situations and having to do things that go against her. And yet she's doing them because that's the best alternative in the situation. Anyway, I'm trying to be vague. There's legal stuff that happens because she's a lawyer. There's cases she takes on. Seasons two and three have cases that I remember pretty clearly. One has to do with she's defending a, uh, a woman who's accused of murdering her husband. I don't remember cases she worked on in the first one, but I, I do know that she did. And in the third season, she works on the case of this child who is petitioning the court to, uh, he's like a teenager and he has cancer. He's petitioning the court for a, an operation to deal with this tumor that he has. And so in, in addition to her personal life, they, they weave in her professional life and the cases that she's working on and the emotional toll that working on those cases takes on her. And some of the situations that her clients are in and the stories revolving around those cases that she's working on, not even connected with her own personal issues, they're quite touching, very moving. Like the one in season three, that just, poof, just a about moved me to tears, you guys. It was just so real and you just didn't know what was gonna happen and you just felt so bad for some of these people in here. And her trying so hard to help them and getting so emotionally invested in the people that she's 
working with and, and trying to help. It's just, I just, I can't say enough good things about this show. I went looking for reviews of it on YouTube and I didn't see any reviews. I saw people doing reactions, but I didn't see anyone doing a review of this. So this is not something that's widely known about, unfortunately, but I loved the heck out of this and wanted to talk about it. And I've done a really crappy job of talking about it because I came into this with no notes. My videos are already sort of fly by the seat of my pants type of discussion, but it, at least I have notes to go by. I took no notes. That was a mistake. But the takeaway from this is that this show is very emotionally anchored in real life situations and struggles. Something that this reminded me of was Luther a bit. And by that, I mean, it's it's not as fast paced as Luther because Luther, he's a detective. He's involved in all this stuff. He's working on these cases, but he's got other stuff going on in his life that pull him in about 5,000 different directions. And he's trying to clean up all these messes. And he gets himself in situations where he has to make decisions, bad decisions. But in that moment, that's the best decision at the time. I mentioned that in my review of the show. And he's just like, how is he going to fix this problem? And he and he's trying to do this. And then this comes at him. And then this comes at, you know, that's exactly what was going on in here with her character, except not as fast paced. She was working on these cases. She's trying to figure out what's going on with her husband. Due to the stuff involving her husband, she gets dragged into all sorts of messes and put in bad situations and things happen as a result of that. And then she's trying to fix that situation. And meanwhile, she's still trying to work and she's trying to keep her family together and she's trying to be strong in front of her kids and, you know, and deal with the issues with her daughters as they get older and they, they have their own struggles. And then, you know, one of her daughters is having a lot of anxiety issues and she's trying to do. So it's just like all these things pulling at her and you're like, oh my gosh, how in the world? I think any parent can probably identify with that sort of turmoil that she's going through, not to maybe not to the same extreme level, but you can identify with it because you're a parent, you have children, you're trying to raise these children, and yet you, you're also occupied with things here and there and different things are pulling at you and then your kids get sick and you worry about your kids and then you've got other things over here that occupy your concern and sometimes maybe that might stress you out, but you don't want to reflect that to your kids. You want to, you know, that sort of thing. So I could really identify with her on so many levels, as a mother especially. And though this show is very female-centric because it revolves around her, two of her kids are girls, she has a, a partner at the law firm, at her, the law firm she works with is a girl, and she's got a best friend that's a girl. Though this is female-centric, it does not in any way, from what I could pick up, it does not in any way present men as bad and the cause of all these awful problems that are happening. And I appreciated that they did not take that sort of men are bad type of narrative or anything like that. And I didn't pick up on any sort of agenda, anything. And I don't know how much of that is because it's a show from over there. And maybe they're not as obsessed with wokeness and crap as over here in the U.S.? I don't, I don't know. But I just feel like this was some solid storytelling and very solid acting. I really love her acting. She's so heartfelt. She's so, so good. I mean, you just really believe that she is this character. I really believed that she is Faith Howells. And, and something that I really appreciated about her acting is she was really good at showing how she was was falling apart in different ways, like frustrations. Like there's this one scene, it made me laugh because I can identify completely. I think it was like the dishwasher. She goes to close it and it didn't close. And so she like slammed it. It was like a door or something. And she and it wasn't doing what she wanted. So she slammed it and then she like pointed at it. Like, <laughs> it was like I, I totally get you. <laughs> You know, when you get mad at inanimate objects, but she was just so frustrated. It was just like, Ugh. and then this doggone door wasn't cooperating with her. <laughs> it was just, anyway, it was funny. She just, she's just a lovely actor. And I look forward to 
tracking down more things that she's in and yeah, wouldn't wouldn't mind rewatching this. Because there had been such a span of time between season one and then I had started season two because it, it came out shortly after I had finished season one. Because there was such a span of time from when I started season two to when I finished it and then finished season three, I would just love to go back from the beginning and watch it all over again. And because it's only 20 episodes, it's like 20 hours long, it's not something that would take a huge chunk out of my time if I watched like, I don't know, one episode a week. Ah, just like, I just love this show. I loved it. I think that's enough blathering for now. This has been one of the most chaotic, unorganized reviews I've ever done. But hopefully, if you take anything away from this, it will be that the emotional aspects of this show are what really kept me pulled in and the authentic acting that we got. I also appreciated the different little side stories of the people that were in her life. Maybe that's not something that a lot of people would appreciate. Maybe they feel like, hey, it doesn't, this doesn't matter. Let's get back to faith. But what I liked about these other little side things that it was showing with the different characters around her was that it gave them more depth. They weren't just these characters that were there and you didn't feel connected to them. These little side stories that were happening with the people, with other people besides her, just gave this show so much more weight to me and made me feel like I was just part of their world and I wanted to stay part of their world. I wanted to just keep coming back and just see what was going on with them. And the scenery in this in this show, I really loved it. I mean, it was gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. It was a cute little place where they filmed this. Okay, I think that's enough. I, I just, I, I feel like I need, I, there's a lot of like editing I'm going to have to be doing during this because I've just rambled on and on and on. But... <sighs> If you guys have Acorn TV, which I kind of doubt because it's not like a big, huge thing like Netflix, but if you ever get a chance to watch this show, let me know what you think. I don't think I'm going to hear from anybody in my audience, except maybe D, because he did express some interest in Acorn TV. But if anybody watching this has seen it, tell me what you think. I hate that this show doesn't have the attention that I feel like it deserves. I mean, I think it got plenty of positive attention, but geez, I just wish more people here knew about it. Don't go and Americanize it. Don't do it. Don't do it. They did that with Broadchurch, and mm -mm. they had a singer songwriter by the name of Amy Wodge. Wodge? Amy Watt? Amy Wodge. Okay, whatever. She's ha she has a last name. It's hard to pronounce for me. She wrote songs for this show and they are excellent and she performs them in such a beautiful way and there's like one song for every season that is woven throughout each episode throughout the entire season they're just such beautifully written lyrics and performed in such a haunting way by the the singer i will never forget those songs because they were just so touching what I was attempting to sing at the beginning was uh, what's called Faith's Song from season one. I will try to remember to put a link to a playlist of the songs from this show in the description below. So you can just kind of listen to them and see for yourself. If the, I don't know, maybe this show is going to feel too mushy, gushy, ridiculous for most people, but I didn't feel like it was overly sappy or ridiculous. And I was so emotionally invested in these characters and wanted to um, share those thoughts with you. Okay, definitely signing off for now. <laughs> Bye.